So the next question was roll centers if they matter and upper A-frame angles and bump stops. Does the roll center stuff matter with all the crazy angles with the cars traveled starting at low heights? And yeah, it does. Because um, even when you didn't have bump stops, when you ran at high heights, you still were at full travel in the middle of the corner, still had the same angles. We're just starting there, starting lower to begin with. Um, the roll center, to me, it, the biggest thing I use when I'm looking at what I'm doing with my roll center is, is my height as much as my left or right. If I'm a, if I'm a, a super, let's say, right, and I'm starting low, I'm already on the ground and the motor's two inches lower than a crate motor versus if I'm a pro car with the crate motor up where I got steel heads on, which is another 40 pounds of weight up above the bay bars. Um, it's kind of like if you put a bowling ball on a stick, right? If you hold right next to the bowling ball, it's hard to get a lot of momentum, you know, but if you grab that stick, you know, 18 inches below the bowling ball and hold it over your head and swing it and then try to stop it, it takes a lot more energy to stop that load. Well, that's what your roll center is. It's mechanical jacking to help fight the inertia of the motor wanting to sling the car over on the right front. So guys who are running steelhead motors, or if you got crate motors, or you got some crazy high engine height rule, um, it's still up there. You're still trying to control that roll. So that's where the height of your roll center, the higher it is, the more it'll control the tip of the car. If you've got a aluminum motor that's on the earth, the short pan, and you're starting at low heights where the car's only traveling an inch, well, you can probably run the roll center a lot lower and a lot further left and not have to worry about controlling the motor so much. You can just use it to load up the tires. But if you're traveling, it's just momentum, right? A car that starts at full ride height and is moving three, four inches, right? It gets a run at it, right? And then you're trying to stop that motion. So you're trying to keep it from slamming the car on the right front. So you're gonna need a bigger bar and more right front spring. You know, or you could work on your roll centers and use that to help hold the car from tipping on the right front. And as far as the A-frame angles, you can, if you're not traveling that much, you can use that to help put jacking in the tires, to help load the front tires. You know, and a lot of people don't understand what jacking is. I mean, they're like, oh, it's front load. But it is and it isn't, right? Jacking is a mechanical advantage in the car but jacking's kind of like tying a rope around your ankles and pulling it up over your shoulder. It makes you shorter, but it doesn't make you weigh more, right? Jacking doesn't make the car weigh more getting in the corner, but it gives it a better platform. It holds the car at a better aero platform, and the air is what makes you weigh more because if you stay sealed up longer, now you have more air on the hood. And as far as air goes, the more that get, if it goes underneath the nose, it's, it's lift. So now it's making your car lighter and you want it as much weight as possible on the front tires. So there's only two ways you can do that. You can either physically put mass on the front tires, which is nose weight, or you can be sealed up and put aero load on it. So if you do it with nose weight, it's kind of like the difference between a bowling ball and a soccer ball, which one changes direction easier, right? If you just do it with physical weight on the front of the nose, you still got to get it to change direction. But if you can do it with aero load, like I kind of call it the finger of God, right? It's pushing the car down, but it's not directional. Like an Indy car, right? They're very nimble. They turn quick because they don't weigh anything and they make three times the aero load of what their weight is so they can change direction real easy. And that's all your jacking really is, is it's a platform. Um, now it does make some wheel load, but the bigger thing is it assists your springs so that the springs don't gotta do all the work. You know, you can force the right front into the track so that it makes more right front load, but it's, it's making more right front load not because it's sticking a tire in the ground, it's making more right front load because you gotta wind the right front spring up more to keep the car from hitting the track. So it's like you just put a post in the right front, which then sends all that load right into the tire where if you have less right front jacking, for example, you, it takes less spring to hold the car up and it's more forgiving on the tire. Now with the tires, they keep making the tires harder so that they don't have tire problems. Well, you gotta piss it off more to make it stick. So the harder tire you have, the more jacking the car likes because the more it wants to piss off the tire to make heat. If you got really soft tires, that's when you melt the tires down. So then you can back some out and be more forgiving. Um, that's really how you decide what you're doing with your geometry is what your platform is. And there's so many different rule packages and tires around the country that it's hard to give one specific, like this is what you gotta do answer because it's dependent on your whole 
track what you're running, what your rules package is. Yeah, if you're on a hard tire with no ride height, you can run a super stiff right front spring and a bunch of jacking in it and just turn the tire on and you'll be good, and especially if you're running a 40 lapper. If you're running 200 lap races, 150 lap races every week on soft tires, you probably don't want to do that because you qualify good and lap 50 you'll be done. So it's, I don't have all the answers, you know, but that's the, that's the mindset you got to have when you're looking at what you're picking and why. It isn't just a cut and dry, oh, you got to have the roll center here and you should run flat arms or you should run a bunch of angle on your arms. It's really about what you're trying to accomplish. And there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? So there's more than one way to get there. Uh, you just kind of got to decide what yours is. And you know, if I got steel heads and no ride height, I'm going to have to have a higher roll center and I can probably run more right front spring to help that. And that's going to help turn that tire on on my hard tire or if I've got aluminum heads and a low motor and no ride height, I probably got to do some work to make that thing piss the right front tire off. So I'm going to have to put some jacking, a flat upper A-frame, some more angle in the lower. Um, that's really what it comes down to.